the first part of chapter six deals with free radicals, and here we have the the six basic steps of a free radical of any free radical mechanism. And you will notice that in the first one, the homolytic cleavage or initiation. that there are only two arrows needed because we only have two electrons moving in the bond that's breaking between our initiators. In all of the other, in, in the parts of the, the reaction that are propagation steps, which are the second, third, fourth, and fifth steps, You notice that there are three arrows moving in each of those because we have three electrons. We have the free radical electron and then the two electrons in the bond that are breaking. So we have a total of three electrons moving in each propagation step. And in that we also have to show that we have the three arrows moving and how, where they end up, so we have to be very careful how we show the arrows, making sure that the, the bond forming, the two arrows for the bond forming come together, and the bond that's breaking, the arrow goes to, the atom it goes to. And then the final step, the coupling or termination, is just like the initiator where we have two electrons coming together to form a bond, so we're killing off the, the free radical mechanism and the initiation and the termination both have just two arrows needed and we have to be careful in all of the free radical prop all the free radical reactions that we draw the fish hook arrow with just the one hook on it not the double headed arrow that we've been showing all along so here we have a the first of the possible mechanisms, the chlorination of methane, it's all shown here where we have the methane, the chlorine gas, light, H nu, forming the chloromethane and hydrochloric acid. The initiator step, we have the bond breaking between the two chlorines to form the chlorine free radical, and then we propagate the reaction with the chlorine free radical. All of the propagation steps have to, or have a small whole molecule and a free radical reacting together to form a new small whole molecule and a new free radical. And then the termination, two free radicals come together. And for the termination step, the easiest one to show is whatever the opposite of your initiation was where you formed two free radicals and the termination, two free radicals come together to form a small whole molecule. So here we have the another free radical reaction, and we have our alk alk alkene reacting with bromine and light. And in this, we see that the bromine, since we're given the whole reaction, the bromine ends up on the allylic carbon, and the allylic carbon is the one next to the carbon-carbon double bond. So this carbon right here is the allylic carbon. And when we look at a, a propagation step for this, our bromine free radical would abstract a hydrogen off of the allylic carbon to give us this free radical. And we should be able to explain why this is the most stable free radical. And remember, in class, we've said all along there are four basic principles of organic chemistry that answer all the questions that I will ask you, with the first one being resonance, then electronegativity, pKa, and sterics. And those are the four basic principles of organic chemistry and one of those four can explain why this is the most stable free radical that can be formed from a molecule of cyclohexene. 
And we all know that resonance is the reason why, because we can draw a resonance structure for this radical moving it from the allylic carbon, carbon one, basically, to carbon three in the cyclohexene. And when we draw resonance structures, we always have to put the resonance arrow in between, and we have to show all our electrons moving. So our resonance structure is this, and the more resonance structures we can draw for something, the more stable it is. So here we have two reactions that both add an H and a BR across a double bond. In the first one, where all we have is hydrobromic acid, we have the bromine adding to the more substituted carbon, where the, the double bond attacks the least electronegative atom in solution, kicks the bromine out. We know we want to form the most stable cation, so we get the cation on the tertiary carbon, and then the bromide ion adds to the cation to give us the the tertiary bromide. So that's the ionic reaction. In the second step, the second reaction, we have peroxide and the initiator for this reaction is the peroxide breaking apart into two free radicals and then the in a propagation step the RO free radical can react with HBr to make ROH plus the bromine free radical. That's our first propagation step. The second step, propagation step, the bromine free radical can react with the methyl cyclohexene and the bromine free radical adds to the carbon to make the most stable free radical and free radicals, just like cations, are electron poor, so we form the tertiary free radical. And then in the third propagation step, this tertiary free radical will react with HBr to abstract an H off of HBr to give us the bromine on the less substituted carbon and we put the hydrogen on the more substituted carbon and then in the, the termination step we have two free radicals come together and the two free radicals it can be any two free radicals that we want to bring together it could be an RO free radical it could be a bromine free radical it could be the the cyclohexane free radical and the easiest one to bring together is usually the whatever initiated the reaction and you just form the bond between the two oxygens. And here we have two more. With chlorine it is not as selective as bromine in the free radical halogenation so normally you'll see bromine used and bromine is very selective in that it will always go towards the most substituted carbon and replace the hydrogen on that with the, a bromine. So in this we know the initiator is the bromine it splits apart into two bromine free radicals the bromine free radical then in, propagates the reaction with the abstraction of the hydrogen off of the 2-methyl pentane to give us the 2-methyl pentane free radical along with HBr and then our 2-methyl free radical can abstract a bromine from our bromine molecule to give us our other product
and then we can terminate the reaction with two bromine molecules coming back together to form a small whole molecule. If you have any questions about free radicals, be sure to, to send me an email or come by and talk to me in my office.